Hello and welcome back, MC1 Gamer here, bringing you uh, a little bit of an update. So this is uh, the second week of my printing, uh, I guess, marathon. Uh, I got a, a 3D printer uh, that I had gotten on board with uh, probably at the beginning of the summer. I got involved with a Kickstarter, uh, which I think was a phenomenal idea, uh, printable scenery with their apocalypse uh, terrain, just a huge array of, of files that I'm starting to crank out, and I've learned a, just a ton. Uh, I've, I've been on the uh, the a forum, which which is a general forum for uh, for three D printers, uh, three three D printing people makers, uh, and um, that's what they call makers. And so I guess I'm a maker now. Uh, and then I've also been on the forum that is specific to the uh, to the printer I got, which is the Prusa Mark II, i3 Mark II, which is a great printer. I think I really lucked out on what was would turn out to be my very first printer. So uh, there's a bunch of things I've learned. I want to share that with you. If you have questions, I'm going to do a separate question and answer session. Uh, if there are things that you're interested in seeing more of, Please let me know. I'm actually considering, uh, you know, providing some services with my printer. Um, you know, I can't really. Uh, there's some things I can't do because of the uh, licensing requirements with these files. But I have a 3D printer, so if you are looking for uh, for printing, I might be able to work some kind of a, a barter system out or something like that. But this is I'm printing this stuff up for my personal use. I'm printing these up for events, for games that I'm playing. For a variety of, of different things, and I'm just cranking out as much as I can. And I want to, I'm kind of gearing up for running multiple tables, you know, numerous tables, and maybe even doing some big events down the road that, uh, well, you know, we'll see if there's something to announce, I'll announce. In any case, uh, here's what we have. This is, again, about two weeks. This thing has been cranking out, not 24 7, but there have been a couple of, a couple of two or three day stretches that were just constant. And some of these are multi-part prints, so I want to share and show you some of the stuff that uh, that I've done. Now, some of these things you've seen already. So I showed, for instance, this is one of the early ones that I had done. Um, this was done, this is about maybe 20% or 10% uh, bigger than the standard size of uh, of um, of the print, uh, of, the, of the file itself. I always wanted something a little bigger, but it really didn't, you know, I, I kind of, when I looked at it, um, I wanted a little bit of, uh, of space here for a couple of different f uh, figures. It really can't be a, a unit that would fit uh, uh, if you're doing a war game like an Age of Sigmar or something like that. But, uh, you know, maybe a character or two or maybe a very small unit of, you know, of, of, of three or five guys um, that could fit there. But it just seemed a little small to me, so I wanted to up it, and I upped it with the same file from this set, uh, which was this one, and I wanted to make sure that this little extra area here which you're going to see is comes into play in a future battle report was big enough for at least a uh, 28 millimeter figure um, and then a couple of guys a couple down down here now, this has been up to about maybe 30 percent this is 130 percent of the original file it's the same file it's the stone ruins it's actually, no, actually Roman ruins and you can see that I've um I've given a nice coat of gray I haven't done anything else no no washes no highlighting no dry brushing nothing and you can see there's a big difference. Uh, between what you know what, what initially it came out as this is one of the first ones actually I printed which is the dragon deus the ruined one I'm going to have it print a second one of these which is going to be in pristine shape to kind of be a contrast to this but you know this is it came out it was it came out printed like this and it's a little shiny you know it, you may you may even see some of these lines not really that easily I'll try and get a little closer here maybe you can show some of them but it's really hard to see but once you go and put a layer of paint on they almost completely disappear. I mean, you got to get up close, but from a terrain standpoint, from a gaming standpoint, you know, you can see the lines here, but you're really not seeing them like this. Uh, it's it's it for terrain. These these the print quality is amazing. Uh, it really is a good quality. You don't need to be. It doesn't need to be like a miniature quality where you really need the details. And some of these the details, which is a lot of detail, and it comes out. I can't wait to go and show you this one with some of the uh the full on you know just not full on it's just it's just a coat it's one coat of of gray and it really changes the look i mean it look it comes it starts out looking like this and then this is with no extra effort just some a rattle can 
a rattle can of, you know, army painter gray. Um, so I printed it a bunch of additional things. Um, had some issues early on. Um, you may have seen this one in one of the early ones. This is much bigger. This is like 150%. This is way big, way bigger than I intended initially. But I had some problems with the adhesion to the bed, especially with larger prints. And this back area warped. So I didn't want to ruin it. This is a large print. This is like a, you know, two days of printing. This one piece, this big hunk of, you know, big hunk of uh, plastic. And it's a two-parter, um, and I didn't want to mess it up, and I went way too far on the infill on this. That's how thick the lattice work is, how, how complex the lattice work is. It wastes a lot of plastic, but this one is, this is a hefty, hefty piece. And I added it onto a platform because it was uneven. This piece was coming up, and I haven't had that problem since. Uh, one of the ways you can get around that, just so you know, is things like maybe increasing the temperature of the bed, which is the platform that the print is on. Um, another way is, believe it or not, hairspray. <laughs> just a little a little bit of hairspray. Some people use tape. Um, the Prusa really shouldn't need it, but I found that uh, you know once you level everything out, once you get everything dialed in, you know, the, uh, the X, Y, Z axis, all the bed leveling, uh, once you calibrate it, it should be fine. These things shouldn't come up, but there are issues sometimes that happens. It could be the material. It could be, uh, you know, if you have a, a fan, it could actually... Uh, you know, an attic fan or, you know, a ceiling fan, it could actually cool some of this down quicker where it should actually starts peeling off, peeling up, curling up. So whatever the reasoning that this happened, it hasn't happened since. But what I did was I put it on a, you know, one of those, you know, the old plastic uh, movement trays, cut it out. I printed out these rocky formations, which is actually a file in the ruins, um, the stone ruins, and then filled it in with other material. And now, you know, I have an even bigger base, and it actually fits with all the extra pieces, but this is a, a beautiful piece, and now it works, and it's level. So kind of works out nicely. That one that was, an, was an old one. I've got a couple of newer pieces. Um, this one you may or may not have seen. I think I showed this one to, um, uh, at one point. Uh, this is a huge piece. This, you could print this thing out in several different pieces. I chose to print it out because my bed, the bed, um, is just is is really big. But look at the detail on that. Look at that. You can see, you know the. You can print this out with you know other. There are lots of little pieces that you can put in here that are just fallen pieces of the architecture. Um, additional pieces that actually also could sit out here, but I just wanted to print out this one big hunk, um, and I didn't make the mistake of doing the you know the really dense infill, um, and give it a coat, and it just looks like this you know stone ruin, uh, this uh, cathedral, and I think it just uh, just came out really nice, and it's a great piece. Look at all the stuff that can fit on there. Look at look at how much. Here's my hand, you know. Look at how many figures can fit on this from monsters to monstrous ca infantry and cavalry to just large units i'm not even gonna put this on a base why should i i don't need to there's just so much territory around here for things and look look at how cool it is look at this piece right here i just love how this statue and these statues in the back you know they just came out so well and these these things you think they'd be flimsy but i mean this is you know, it's hard plastic. I mean, this might come off at some point. I'm guessing it could, but I just don't see it coming happening. Anyway, these, this again, this is just with a coat of, of gray. So I've got a couple extra pieces. Um, there, I'm starting to do this um, this uh, uh, tavern. It comes with, you know, this two-part. Um, this is a well, you know, water well. And it comes with this barrel. Not too exciting, but hey, it's a nice barrel. And... You know, really good detail on there. Um, I could print that out in brown. I have some brown PLA um, for a, a ship that I'm intending to build. This over here is really small part. Hey, look at the look at the roof on this. Just beautiful. This is only one section of a roof. This is this tavern whips around like this, and this is just the first few sections. So there's actually a whole other second tier. This is the third floor. So it's going to be up like that, and um, then there's a whole section in the back there. I just wanted to go show that. Um, this is called a um, a bridge cottage. So I'm guessing that there's a stream or something that goes through here. Um, I, it takes a little bit of effort in terms of, of, of some of these multi-part kits to glue them together. I use the five minute epoxy, which you gotta be very careful with because um, you don't wanna get it all over yourself. And sometimes I use some crazy glue. So you can see some of that, that stuff's just gonna disappear once um, once I do a spray. You can see some of, some of it on the bottom, but you could put these, these uh, floor pieces on it comes with them and um, if you if you know how to if you play around with it 
a little bit. You can find a way with either pins, um, magnets. In my case, I'm going to be using some raised area, you know, raised, I'm going to print out some, you know, just a, a flat piece that I'm going to carve out and just raise it up a little bit so that this, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll extend a little bit beyond here and then the roof will just sit on top of it and I can take the roof off and then there's that, this empty spot. If you're playing role play games, that's great, you know, you can have guys sit in there, but for, in terms of war gaming, you just put a couple guys in there, they occupy the, uh, the, you know, the building and this one is, this is just a beautiful, look at that, that's just a beautiful building and look at the roof on that. I mean, it's just great. This is the front. I got to tell you, I don't know how people get up there because that's the that's supposed to be the the door, but this is how it's set up. Um, <laughs> so maybe it's uh, it's meant for when you know when the when the water rises, <laughs> it becomes you know a uh, you know just some place where you know you can row up to it. I don't know. I don't know what the um, the bridge cottage is, but <laughs> it looks great. I don't if, if even if it's not uh, the idea of how to get up here is not functional. A rope, a ladder, stairs. I don't know. It doesn't come with it. But anyway, I just I I'm gonna you know I'm gonna have it where this I've glued this piece on to this because I you know nobody's gonna occupy the uh, stone foundation. But that sits. It's a nice piece of terrain. Really good blocking terrain. And then there's this behemoth here in the back. I'm gonna move this piece here because it kind of blends in. This is a multi-part one. And wow. This, I'm still not done with it. I have to finish it. So it's hard to get the perspective of just how big this thing is. I mean, it's as big as this is. You know, let me put this next door on it. There's a lot of pieces, and this is not even by, by far not even the biggest. And it's, I'm, I'm doing it in a way, you can see that this is, this is called a war cottage. And it just sits about a good foot off the ground. And so I have it, the same one with the other one, like the, um, the, uh, the bridge cottage. I have it so that the roof is going to come off. This piece is going to come off. There's another layer in here, um, which, you know, I'm going to do again with extended, just extended pieces that I'm going to glue on to the back of here. And then, you know, this little shack at the bottom, if, uh, you know, for anybody who wants to occupy that. Um, and then, of course, this section, this is the battlements. That sits atop it, and there's a lot of guys who could sit there. At least five or eight guys would probably sit up there, and um, you have a whole section in there for, you know, for troops to occupy. And yeah, it's just a, it's a great blocking terrain. It's got this nice walk up here. You could, guys could sit on here, in here, and then there's two different sections by which they could be um, placed. You could put a whole unit of troops in a war game uh, environment in that in that and and beyond the fact that it just block and blocks line of sight and just a beautiful piece sitting on the uh the the uh, the table in addition to this you know just highlighting this one again look how much ter territory like how much area you can occupy with stuff that you want to print that you want to you want to play that you want to get some cover um depending on the game system that you want so this is a healthy amount of terrain and this is, again, the better part of two weeks of printing. Uh, not 24-7, but there have been a couple stretches. Uh, learned a few things. You know, the, um, the amount of... I've gone through... I think I've gone through three spools now, which they average between anywhere from, you know, 20 bucks and change all the way up to 50 for, you know, for the different qualities. You can get different colors, even metallic colors. Um, so I'm averaging, you know, about that much. But in terms of the time factor... There is a whole lot to be concerned about. Things like getting down to the lower end of a spool and having to pause and change over to, say, a, a new spool of PLA, which is the plastic, and hoping that, of course, it doesn't, the interruption doesn't, be, isn't noticeable on the print. The other thing is, you could have a 12 or 14 or, you know, or, or, or even 24 hour print job. What happens if it stops when you're not home um, and you run out of PLA and you haven't been able to change over? That print is done. It's gone. So there's, there's some time management that's really a pain in the neck, especially when you get low. You got, right now I'm printing. I'm at the low part of my third uh, spool. And I've got about five more spools uh, on deck. So you can imagine how much terrain I can actually field when you look at how much is here just for like two and a half spools of PLA and how much I could do with five more, with like eight spools. That's a lot of, a lot, whoop, there goes my light. That is a lot, 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 lot of material. That's good I could probably fill maybe, I don't know, four tables of, uh, and there goes my light, um, I could probably fill four tables of, um, of wargaming 
with just that stuff easily with good density. I mean, this like this is like this with not counting the the idea of maybe trees. Um, this is easily easily two solid tables. Uh, I could probably stretch this into three tables. Just what I have here. Imagine how many how many tables and variations I could have with you know two and a half times more of this. Uh, so or double what this is. I mean, it's just, there's a lot of options, a lot of variants, um, the, the, from the castles to the taverns to the merchant houses to the windmills, uh, water mills and stuff like that. There's so much that I still have to print, and that's not even counting the World War II stuff and the uh, sci-fi stuff that uh, I have in my files, plus files that I found uh, that are free that are out there on places like Thingverse. So there's a whole wealth of this stuff that you can find. And, uh, you know, printable scenery is just just such great quality. And the printer, I can't, I, I cannot say enough about the, uh, the, the Prusa printer. Uh, the, the customer service is great. That's, you know, the support they, you know, get on chat. They really have been help, were helpful with some of the calibration I had early on. Uh, the community is great. Uh, there's just there's a lot of very experienced people that you know just willingly uh, make uh, their designers not just basic printers like me they actually design stuff and people are actually printing stuff that actually improves the printer uh, which is really cool and if you have a problem you know there are people have do have issues it is this is still you know young early days of um, you know 3D printing especially when you talk about the uh, the hobby aspect of it which is you know this is a hobby it's a tinkerer's hobby you're going to be you're definitely going to be um, t tinkering with this device, and uh, it's going to fail sometimes. I mean, I've, I think I've gone through maybe a quarter spool just with failures. Maybe not so much that. But there have been some that I stopped, you know, in the early stages. I could see that they weren't working. Maybe they failed. They weren't adhesing until I started tweaking that. Now I've dialed it in pretty well, so I'm really cranking stuff out. But there are all kinds of problems. Sometimes, you know, a, a pillar will fall over. Um, with this piece right here, you know, there's supposed to be a, a, a wooden pillar that went down the middle here, a wooden plank and it fell over and then when I looked at it after you know it, it, it was this piece this section was done I was like you know it looks just fine you know without it I don't have to go and glue that piece in there and try to green stuff what was left so you know <laughs> it's uh and 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 you know using some of the adhesion methods whether it's crazy glue I recommend you know the the epoxy like the five minute epoxy I did that with these sections these are multiple sections here this is different from this and this and I just I glued some of these including the stairs i glued some of the stuff together to so that because they're not meant to move and it's a bigger piece but this is like a six or eight section build and this is not even by far the biggest one wait till you see the frigate the frigate is now i could play with the dimensions of it but i swear the frigate is twice the length of this it's probably it's probably as long as these two pieces combined not even counting the the uh, dowel rod that extends from the front from the uh the bow which means that it's it's got to be like about 25 inches. It's good. It's well over two feet long. Uh, just you know, off the top of my head, just from seeing the you know the ones that have been printed already. And I have brown uh, a PLA that I want to give for like a woodish color, even though I'm going to be base coating over it. Uh, and I want to do that with some of these other files that I have that have more of a wood feel. A lot of this stuff is very stone oriented. Even these houses, there's a lot of stone work. So I wanted to, I didn't care that I was doing them in black. Plus, if I did the base coat of gray, you could see some of the recesses, you know, within, you know, any imperfections. It's easy to see them as just shades. It's almost like, you know, if you wash them already, um, which is why I think these really worked out really well. Um, but there's so many files that I found that were free that are amazing uh, beyond the ones that I already have. So, you know, if you have any questions or if there's things you want to specifically see, feel free to ask those questions, make those comments. You know, if you're an experienced 3D printer uh, yourself, uh, feel free to go and weigh in with your experiences, especially if you're also a war gamer. But in terms of what I'm doing, uh, you know, I, I printed out some cute files for my son and my wife, just, you know, funny tchotchke things that my wife can have at uh, work um, and my son can, you know, play around with. Uh, but, you know, this stuff is for me and for events and for uh, just, you know, just for fun. And I'm sure there's other practical uses that I, will, I could use, uh, but they don't really apply as much to me. <clears throat> right now, the application for me is, you know, wargaming terrain so that I can run bigger events and I can enjoy the games that I play with a really good variety of terrain. So whatever your, you know, your, your, your needs are, it's out there, man. There's so many great, you know, Kickstarters and businesses that actually, you know, that, 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 that provide those files. You know, you could get involved in a, if you don't want to go and get the big, um, 
go the, the, the heavy route of paying for anywhere from like a four or five hundred dollars all the way to over a thousand dollars for a good printer um and there are various good ones that are out there beyond the one that i have uh especially in that price range you can go and just get the files and find somebody like me and work out something to go get those printed you know uh uh, there's, there's, there's ways to do that. There are businesses that actually do that also locally that are starting to pop up. It's a, you're not going to get rich. Nobody's making a living off of doing it. So, uh, but it's something that, you know, as a community we can do to kind of support each other. And that's one of the reasons why I'm building this out. You know, I'm going to be kidding out, you know, some, some of the local shops with a couple extra, you know, terrain pieces. Um, and, uh, you know, I might use these as also as a, a subscriber and Patreon uh, um, rewards. And speaking of that, I reopened my Patreon account. Uh, so go check it out. Go check me out on Twitter. If you're interested in, uh, in providing some support, uh, there's, I'm going to do a video on what my plans are with the channel and what I'm looking to do, uh, from the, uh, you know, just from event, uh, you know, going to events and participating in events and providing content, uh, and the like. And, uh, I know I had a bunch of supporters, prior to shutting down my Patreon, but the reason why I'm shutting it down now is because I hit that really fun milestone of getting that first $100 check from Google, uh, well, it wasn't a check, but, you know, and, and, and I've hit it a while ago, um, and I just, I don't, I'm going to shut down all the ads on all my uh, videos, uh, just because I just don't need it, I don't want it, it's not a lot of, it's, 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 fractions of a penny and uh it, it could be intrusive or a nuisance for people watching it and i just wanted to hit that one milestone just to say hey google paid me something for all this fun and effort and uh if people want to support me in some small way even a dollar a month uh feel free to go do that and if you're a former uh, um, uh, uh donor uh, of me before, you know, I'd be happy to have you back and get on board because I'm going to have some levels and some input from people that, um, that do that. So some of that is also going to be printing out some of these pieces and providing them with a subscriber slash, you know, donor giveaway. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, hoping that, you know, people are interested in that. And if not, hey, there's no obligation. I'm still going to be cranking out these videos and there's not going to be any like paywall or anything like that, that you have to, you know, indefinitely subscribe or anything like that. I'm not looking to do that, but I hope you enjoy this again. Uh, I'm having fun doing it. It's kind of mesmerizing watching this machine work. It's kind of therapeutic in some ways. You could just completely get hypnotized watching this thing for, you know, at least I do. I'll sometimes sit there for, you know, just inspecting the print, making sure that everything's adhesing, just checking out what it does and how it does it. And if you're really interested in seeing that, I can actually go show a print, not the whole full length of them. I'm not going to do 15 hours of, of, of the video, but I could show how the first layer works, um, what the printer actually does. So you get an idea of how it builds that first layer, things like that. If you have questions about, you know, any of the things that I've learned, I am not an expert by this. I'm just a couple weeks into this. There are plenty of people that are far more experienced than I, and I'm leaning on them in the various forums that I've been going to, just talking about stuff and asking questions and then watching and lurking at the questions that other people ask and now the troubleshooting they have. And then, of course, you know, benefiting from all that, that, that discourse back and forth. But if you have questions from a beginner's point of view, just from a beginner, hey, I'm looking to start out. What are the, what are the pitfalls you had? What are some of the hurdles? What are some of the early things that you learn that maybe you didn't understand because this is, this is a there's definitely a learning curve here um i'd be happy to go and do that um if that's an intro if that's an idea of video that you'd be interested in uh in seeing um and then any other suggestions or ideas that you might have otherwise i'll be happy to entertain uh thanks for tuning in and have a great day everybody <laughs>